What's up, guys? Nathan here from Avian. Uh, gonna show you my base rig because it's Friday. We got nothing to do. Got Jam Farmer on camera here, so thank you for that. Uh, first, we got an Ibanez SR500 base, and yeah, it's been a little abused. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. That's they're really nice bases. Though. I really like them. It's a chambered mahogany body, so it's lightweight and a babinga neck. So it's actually pretty neck heavy, but I like it. Feels very good. You can feel. Uh, you know, really feel a lot of the sound while you're playing it. It's only four string. Used to play five string. Not really much of a use for it since we play in six strings in a C sharp. So we're not, you know, super heavy or anything. Uh, another reason why I like these basses is they have a lot of parameters. Uh, since I don't have a footboard to control my patches and such yet, uh, I run active and passive. On here, we got the pickup blend, master volume. Uh, mid frequency treble and bass. So whenever I have any tapping parts, you know, tapping licks or anything, I push up the treble so they come out. And obviously for the grooves and stuff, I just push up my bass a little bit, make it really play out. It's very comfy. You know, obviously the most important thing when you're picking an instrument is comfortability, and uh, it's very comfortable. It's got Bartolini uh, MK2s, I believe, so they sound pretty good too. Onto the actual sound, we'll start the cab. <coughs> got an Ampeg SV410 cab, SVT410. Uh, it's 800 watts, metal grill. They really don't have to do with anything, but it's cool. Uh, I used to use an 8x10, but um, this sounds a lot better, a lot more clarity, you know, because obviously it's about what cab sounds better, not what's super loud. So this is the one for me, and obviously it's a lot easier to carry around casters, handles, whatnot. Much easier than carrying around a 200 pound uh, 8x10. Move up to the rack here. We've got a, <laughs> got a Line 6 Pod HD Pro. It's actually a guitar interface, but I use it for some patches. You can use it for bass, and I do. And it, Sounds really good, plus we use it for some home recording patches for uh, mine and James Mosman's band here, our little side project. Anyway, we use it, um, you know, I use it for my reverb and some fuzz face, and can be used as a tuner, stuff like that. Just a very handy little thing. <laughs> Above that, we have a MacBook, so I can wirelessly stream my patches while we play live uh, to the internet for everybody to be jealous of my sweet ass Pod HD Pro patches. Obviously, that's bullshit, but it sounds really cool, doesn't it? Above that, we have a Behringer Ultrafex. It's a base processor and an EQ. The Pod Pro is going into the Ultrafex. So, you know, obviously, if you've got more stuff, you can screw around with your tone a lot more. And uh, the EQ is just to make it sound even better. Get as, you know, try to fix my tone as well as I can. Make it sound as good, as clean as possible. Uh, above that, we've got a DTR2 Korg rack tuner. Obviously, just because it's a tuner. Um, up here, we have a Furman power conditioner. These are lights, so when we play live, I can see all my stuff while they're screwing around. Also, they double as robot penises. But they slide back in to hide. Yeah. Use that. Up here, we have the actual amp itself. I just downgraded from a 4,000 watt Bugera to an Ampeg 500, because as I said earlier, it's about your sound, not your power. And it's still loud as hell, but uh, it's an Ampeg PF500 Portaflex. Another relatively inexpensive amp. It sounds wonderful. Really good tone, really solid, and it's very small. It's back fan, so it doesn't overheat. I know that sounds dumb, but you know, when you're carrying your stuff around, you're playing live areas, you know, very high, especially since before I had it in a rack, and this will go in there soon when I find a way to stabilize it. So, uh, it just sounds great running the pod through the effects loop and everything, running XLR out to the cab. Then above it, we have a uh, PlayStation 3. <coughs> um, I'm running optical from the Pod HD Pro to the PS3 because, uh, you know, Blu ray capability, so it sounds you know, the sound quality is just wonderful, and I get true bypass if I run from the Pod HD Pro to the PS3 to the amp. So it just sounds great. Um, I don't know how it managed to be that way. It works really well with uh, with the Mac that I got going on the rack, too. I can only safely assume that Steve Jobs and Yoko Yamaha Suzuki were at one point uh, collaborating in their own band of sorts, maybe. You know, maybe they were both bassists or something. <laughs> so, yeah, because it just sounds wonderful, so I'll keep that up here. Uh, Got some beats, screw around with the uh, Pod HD Pro. Yeah, this is my rig. Sounds pretty good. <coughs> Hopefully we'll be hearing it on uh, the new tracks we got coming up. And uh, you'll definitely be hearing it at shows in the next couple months. And uh, anything we do online. It sounds wonderful. It's relatively inexpensive. And it keeps up with what I do, so I like it. Yeah.